What is a fertility doctor? Today, I'm telling you what you need to know. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. I am Dr. Natalie Crawford, a board certified OBGYN and a board certified fertility doctor or an REI. And today I'm talking about who is your fertility doctor? What does it mean to be board certified? Why this is important? And things you must know about our changing industry. Because fertility to a lot of people is about making money and not taking care of patients. So let's dive in. Okay, I am coming in with some controversy today. I guess I woke up feeling feisty. For the record, this episode is going to be on the podcast and on YouTube because I think it's really important as a public awareness message about what is happening in medicine. So let's start at the very beginning. An REI stands for Reproductive Endocrinology and Infertility Specialist. In order to become an REI, you had to go through medical school, so four years of medical school. You had to take your basic step exams, which there are four of them in medical school, you had to apply and match to OBGYN residency and complete four years of OBGYN residency. From that, you then had to be able to take OBGYN boards, which is a written exam and an oral and in-person exam where you go sit with your cases and you get quizzed by people who are other board certified OBGYNs. You have to apply and match to an REI fellowship, which is extremely competitive. You have to go to an REI fellowship, which is three years where you learn all about the endocrine system. This is why we can consider ourselves true hormone experts. And you also learn about infertility. You learn about the complex ways that we treat it, how to critically evaluate literature, because this field is constantly changing. What this is not is just learning how to do egg retrievals and embryo transfers and make money. It is learning how to apply scientific data to patients who are vulnerable in search of a family and how to help them achieve a family. Even after all that fun time, you have to go out and practice, work as an REI, have hospital privileges, collect cases, sit for your REI boards, which is again another written proctored exam, and then an oral exam, which is the most terrifying experience of your entire life, where you sit there, you defend your cases, you defend the endocrine system where you have to know what's going on in the body, you defend your infertility care and your surgical care, and you talk through basic statistics and scientific research. In addition to that, we have to have a published research project which proves that we understand the scientific process and the scientific method. It's hard, okay? Did I love giving up three extra years of my life to become an REI? I mean, I would have much preferred to be a general OBGYN out there making money and then still able to go and do fertility and deceive people as a fertility doctor. However, I am somebody who wants to know all the things that I can know. And I would never feel okay taking care of patients if I did not have this training. It took three years because it takes three years. It's not something that's easy to learn. It's not something that you could go and learn perhaps in a week-long course or as an apprenticeship anymore. It used to be that way, but ABOG, the American Board of OBGYN, declared REI its own fellowship, its own subspecialty, its own board certification in the 70s. So it's not like yesterday they thought we should make people do extra training. It's been this way for a while. I'd like to give you some perspective. In OBGYN residency, you have four years of training. You are training in labor, obstetrics, gynecology, GYN oncology, urogynecology, maternal fetal medicine, and REI. Most residents in this country get two months of REI training. Two months in four years. I had two months as an OBGYN resident. The residents who rotate with me right now, because we are a clinical site for the residency here in Austin, they get two months of REI training. That's how much they get when learning about the fertility evaluation, treatments, and counseling patients. So I think that that is one, too low. I've always thought that was too low. But two, to think that it would be okay to take somebody who is a brilliant, fabulous OBGYN and put them through a week-long course and of an apprenticeship 
and say, hey, you only had a couple months of official training. You never sat for boards, nor would you qualify. But now I'm going to let you be a fertility specialist. I'm going to put that on my website. I'm going to let you do retrievals and transfers. I'm going to let you counsel patients on what needs to happen. This to me is a terrible direction on where our field is going. And the truth is, unless you ask the question, you may not know. So I'm going to break down a few other points. One is that it does take time to become board certified. So there's something called board eligible. This means you have graduated from a REI fellowship, but you haven't been in practice long enough to collect those cases to sit for your boards. A board eligible REI is planning to take the boards. So they went through the appropriate training. They have the training they need. I was a board eligible REI at one point, as was every other currently board certified REI. So is it okay to see somebody who's board eligible? Absolutely. Things I would want to look for in their bio or ask, where did they do OBGYN residency? Where did they get their REI training? What fellowship did they go to? Are they board certified in OBGYN? And then in your brain, I want to think about how long they've been out. Because if they've been out longer than three years and they're not board certified yet, why? Because they were definitely eligible to sit for the boards. So those would be red flags to me. Also, there are a few people who are grandfathered in. So if you were OBGYN trained and you practiced fertility medicine before there was that fellowship in 1970, you could be grandfathered in, meaning you didn't have to go back and do an REI fellowship at that time period. There should be very few of those people still practicing. It is 2022. So when people give the argument that there's a lot of non-board certified REIs out there, false, that's not accurate either. So it is a hard training program. It took a long time and that's okay. Now I have fabulous friends who are general OBGYNs and I have nothing bad to say about them. What they do is really tough. It is completely within their wheelhouse to do an evaluation for fertility, to say you've been trying to conceive for X amount of time, you're not pregnant, let's start the workup, 100% appropriate. It's also appropriate to counsel you on that workup and do treatment. So if you're not ovulating, they want to do treatment to help you ovulate. And then sometimes they have the capabilities to do IUI within their practice. I think that's all fine. That helps. It can often be less expensive or easier. Your OB may be closer to you than an REI. No problem with that. However, I do worry if they're counseling you on the full picture, what are your goals, how old you are. And I'm super lucky because the OBs here in town who I practice with, they will catch these patients who are older and yet to start a family and refer them in sooner. So definitely can OBGYNs practice some fertility treatment? Absolutely. They are trained and educated to do that. Are they trained to do IVF? Are they trained to understand some of the intricacies of the endocrine system? They're not. Now, what is happening in the field is that we are seeing a trend and whether it is private equity or venture capitalists putting money, buying practices or starting practices, or even existing physician owned practices who want to be able to see more patients, do more IVF cycles and generate more revenue who are upskilling, this is the keyword they use, upskilling OBGYNs in order to do these procedures and do this counseling. And they are not being transparent about it. Meaning when you go to the website, you have to know to look for board certified REI fellowship because they are putting in these big pretty letters, fertility doctor fertility specialist. They are making it out like that is a perfectly normal thing. Just calling somebody who did not do a fertility training, a fertility doctor. And so you have to know as a consumer, I would presume that if I just picked up the phone and called the fertility clinic, I would be seeing a fertility doctor who did a fertility training and is board certified in fertility, but that's not the case. So you have to know enough to go and look. And the reason why they are doing this is really simple. They're going to act like it is to improve access to care. More patients need to see doctors and they can't get in with them. So we need more fertility doctors. I live in Austin. That's false here. There's plenty of fertility doctors. You can get in with us really easily. It's about making money. It's about a way for them to make money without having to pay the salary of an REI, without having to recruit and bring somebody in, 
without needing somebody with the training. So they are purposefully doing this. A few things, companies are also doing this with mid-level, so PAs or nurse practitioners. Most aren't. Most fertility companies or practices that have a mid-level are using them for initial evaluation, helping out with basic procedures in the office, and they're not training them to do egg retrievals or transfers. But again, if they are, who is managing your IVF cycle? Who's making decisions on if this is appropriate? You have a $20,000 plus investment and who is driving that car for you? Those are big questions I would want to ask. We are also seeing some practices that do have OBGYNs who do OBGYN things. They do pap smears or they do some irregular menses counseling. But what I'm finding is that line is very blurred. Most of them are doing fertility counseling, fertility surgery, managing IVF protocols, stimulation cycles, egg retrievals, and embryo transfers. And if we try to make it out like this is a simple field, it really isn't. Every day I have patients that are really complex and I rack my brain on what to do with them. I am constantly researching newest evidence. I go to conferences so I can hear things. I work with my colleagues to try to best take care of patients. I have regular OBGYNs who practice, who text me questions all the time about things that I do consider bread and butter, but I've got these complex cases that are very hard. Infertility is so isolating. It is not fair. It is something that you are going through that a lot of your peers are not. And what you need and what you deserve is somebody in charge of the process who understands the complexities of the field, who didn't just go to a training course or didn't just like get apprenticed by an REI at one point, who's not just flying solo. That person did not get into REI fellowship. Maybe they couldn't match. Maybe they weren't a good enough candidate. Maybe they tried and they didn't pass their boards. Maybe they dropped out. Maybe they never had interest in fertility, but they're burnt out from OBGYN and now they just want an easier lifestyle or they want something that looks better for them. I think it's a huge red flag when OBGYNs are practicing fertility medicine. We have not seen this utilized in areas where there's true lack of access to care. And I think that this is something that companies and practices are using to pull at us and say, well, this is a good thing. We're improving access to care. We are helping there be more fertility doctors. We are letting REIs practice at the top of their license. I don't even know what that means. What does that mean for me to practice at the top of my license? That means I should take care of fertility patients. How am I doing that if there's OBGYNs doing that? What am I doing that is so different or expert? You can't tell which patient is normal, which patient is high risk. You can't look into the crystal ball and know which complications are going to happen. And so I think that what we are seeing is this trend, whether it's regular fertility, that correlate significantly with money, investors' money being put into medicine and their primary output is number of cycles. How many patients do IVF? They don't care about IUI cycles. They don't care about ovulation induction cycles. They don't care about fertility surgery. They want to do IVF and they want to make money. That is at the top. They will say that they come into the field and they're going to streamline process and cut excess and they're going to be more efficient and that is better for patients. Most physicians strongly say it's the opposite, that if you come in and you streamline things and you put people who are not trained but cost less, you're going to make more money at the expense of patients. And this is happening in many fields of medicine, but in fertility this, this is your thing. You only have a small moment of time to conceive in your lifetime. Once your window is closed, it is closed. Once you've spent all your resources, you might not have enough to keep trying or to go see another fertility doctor. And so unfortunately, the due diligence is on you to know who you're seeing. Are they trained? Who is training them? What is the practice structure like? You have to do that deep dive. We don't live in a world where you can just pick up a phone and call a fertility clinic and get an answer anymore. Okay, so I hope you loved my rant. This is National Infertility Awareness Week, and the thing that I hate the most is when people are being deceived. And I really do think not every private equity practice is like this, of course. Not every physician-owned practice is absolved of this. However, you deserve to know. 
So if you have infertility, you deserve to know who is my fertility doctor? What do they train? What are they training? Are they board certified? And you deserve to know why that matters because only you can help us preserve the integrity of this field. As always, you can get more information on the As Woman podcast, or you can follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. I would love if you would subscribe to the channel. We are 70K subscribers and growing. We are here to change the narrative about fertility so you can be educated about your own future. Thanks, friends. Thank you.